guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna to start creating a butterfly garden. This is gonna be a kind of a temporary thing, but I do want to kind of start the idea on a small scale and then possibly grow it bigger, maybe in a different location. I'll show you where it's gonna go and why it's temporary for now um, in just a second. But I think this is gonna be part one because we are gonna to start to, uh, to construct the fence that's gonna go around it today. Okay, so this is where we're at. This is where the greenhouse is going. Now we're not digging up the, I mean, we are taking up the bricks, like never fear. I know a lot of you guys want to see these gone and I do too. We need to have something a little bit different here, um, but we're not quite ready. I don't want there just to be upheaval everywhere. I don't think that there's any, that's not necessary. <laughs> I think we need to do it in stages here, a little bit of chaos at a time. So that's what's going on here, right in this spot. You might remember the tool shed that was here. Benjamin and I came out and measured this this morning and it's roughly 10 feet by 10 feet. So we thought we could maybe work up the soil here, add in some compost, build a little fence around it and create our very own little butterfly garden. It's essentially gonna be a pollinator garden while I am focusing on all plants that butterflies really like because Benjamin loves to kind of watch butterflies and chase them around. Um, it's gonna attract all the pollinators. It's gonna be a really fun space. I'm going to lean heavily on annuals. So um, some salvia, some gomfrina, sunflowers, agaratum, lantana. I'm trying to think of all the things. I've got some milkweed seed, uh, seeds I had started earlier, which is not an annual, but I'm also gonna use probably a, a little bit of sedum and echinacea, which I will eventually need to move, uh, but it's gonna be such a fun little space. So with the fence, what I wanna do, since this is temporary, and I may use the fence somewhere else later, but I want to keep it on the very inexpensive side. I still want it to look nice because, I mean, we have the Hartley going in, so I want it to look like it kind of blends in with our property, but I think I can, I can make that happen with pallets. I think I can mirror it after our vegetable garden fence and have it still look pretty good. So point of reference, this is our vegetable garden fence. I mean, this is just stained wood, so I can cut pallets apart and I can cut the little angles on the top and while they might not be exact, each one of them might, you know, not all pallet slats are the same, though we might have some thicker ones and some thinner ones. I think we can arrange them in a really pleasing way. I came out here and measured, and these are three and a quarter inch, and so are the spacing right there. So I'll try to get it as close as possible to that. And I'm hoping I can even use like the interior boards on the pallet as my um, horizontal runner boards here. I'm not sure. So the fence may not end up being 100% things that I've been able to scrounge up, um, but I'm hoping so. I'm hoping that most of the supplies um, I can find around here or down at the garden center. In fact, I'm gonna head down there first and grab a few pallets. I thought I had more here, but a friend came and picked them up when I wasn't here. So I didn't realize we didn't have any left. And I almost went with ranch panels. You know, we have a stack of ranch panels that I bought for the uh, cut flower garden fence last year. And we're using some of them as sweet pea trellising and as staking systems for my amaranth and corn and such. But I've still got a few out there and I thought I could cut one down to size, spray paint it black and just pop it up here, which would actually be faster. Um, but it won't look quite as nice. However, I do have some Black Eyed Susan vine, some coconut appeal that I thought I would grow on the fence. So it really, in the end, probably wouldn't matter because the vines will cover the fence, but I kind of want it to be pretty from the start. All right, so let's head down to the garden center quick. It looks like they may have just got a load in from Unique Stone. Whole bunch of pallets with a bunch of burlap. Let's take a quick look. Oh, look at that. Oh, a lot of these pieces are familiar. There's some esplanade urns. Oh my goodness. Okay, but that's not the point of our mission today. That over there is our mission. Oh good, the back is cleared out. I didn't even think about checking to see if there's anything back here. Lucky. Okay, I gotta go track down a forklift. Got all the pallets here, so the first step is to remove all the boards. Um, to get them all torn apart, you can do it by hand with a pry bar and a hammer. I've done that before, but it takes a lot of work. A lot of elbow grease. So I'm gonna be using a reciprocating saw with a metal blade, and I'll just zip that blade right underneath these boards, and it'll cut the nails that these are attached with. 
So that's the first thing I need to do. And then once I have my stack of boards all done, then we'll move on to step two, which will be to cut all of the tops to match the vegetable garden fence. So here we go. So this is what I got out of the first pallet. It's roughly over half of one of the sides, which is pretty darn good, I think. I have one more uh, piece of wood here that I might be able to use if I end up cutting them down far enough. This one got kind of uh, torn apart a bit. And then this is what was left. So if I need to cut some boards, I don't know, these are kind of split though. If I need to use them, I can. And then I might come in and for my horizontal runs instead of going and buying some i can cut these so that they're straight haven't decided yet so i estimated that it was going to take roughly three pallets per 10 foot side and that might be what it ends up becoming because i don't think all of these pallets have this many usable boards It'd be awesome if they did um, but i feel like this is a really good start so that took me like less than five minutes to tear apart so this should go pretty quick this step anyway should go pretty quick also i did switch to a longer blade this one was just not long enough to get the middle boards released because they were too close to each other so it was wanting to bend and that's not safe so anyway i found these in the barn these are wood with nails that's what it says it cuts which is exactly what i'm cutting so that worked out really nicely all right let's tackle a few more So here are all of my boards kind of lined out a bit right here we've got the pile for all the solid sides so the back and then the two sides coming up from the back and then right here is going to be the front they're not spaced exactly but i wanted roughly three and a half feet here three foot opening to walk in and then three and a half feet on the other side so now what i need to do is take one of these and i have a marker i am going to go draw i'm going to use this as a template the top piece here and i'm just going to draw on one of these boards so i can create one that i can copy for all the rest of them because i need to cut all of the tops of these pickets i actually don't think i'm going to make the fence quite this tall this one is like 35 and a half inches tall and i think i'm going to go about 30 inches yeah see i just figured if i lined it up like this and marked it then i could use this one as my template for all the rest of them Ooh need two hands for this though okay so i've got my template board right here i've got the saw set to a 45 degree angle because i think that's what we're dealing with here um, so i'm going to cut all of the ends first i'm just going to bring them over in stacks to this table and we're working in the shade today so anyway let's do this first and then we're going to determine length and cut the bottoms
I want to give you a little update as to where I am. I've got most of the cutting done. I'm going to have to cut a few more horizontal pieces, but the interesting part about this fence, because I don't want to have to go buy any supplies and I'm using just pallet wood, I don't have one continuous 10 foot piece of a board uh, to go in between my two corner posts. And typically we're not going, we're usually going eight feet between posts and I'm pushing it to 10. So I'm gonna be using probably three different sections of horizontal board that I can kind of hide behind a picket, which I'll show you in a second. But because I'm doing it that way, I'm going to assemble my picket sections prior to actually putting them up on the corner posts. And one of my pallets had four nice two by fours, which is perfect for the corners. So you can see here, I've been kind of messing with things a bit. These are not attached, clearly. I haven't spaced them properly. But I've got all my pickets right here. I have two separate piles. This pile was the most uniform in both quality and, um, and everything. So I decided to keep those for the front panel. These are for the back and side panels. And then these are the two by fours. So these are gonna be my corner posts. Typically we use four by fours, but in this case, since it's not permanent, two by fours are gonna work great. And then right here, like I was saying, I don't have one continuous board to run behind a full section, which is 10 feet. Typically we do them eight feet, feet apart, but in this case, I'm stretching it a bit. So what I'm gonna do is use shorter boards. I'll start and end them in the middle of a picket. So the next one will start here so that the seam is hidden and it'll look like a continuous piece, even though it's not. So see how it starts here? and then it cruises this direction, ends here, and then we'll have another section start off of this one. Um, anyway, I think it'll work out nicely. And then over here, I located some one and a half inch construction screws, which honestly I think might be pushing it if I'm using two thinner boards, but I think some of them, it might work on some of them. And then I've got these as well. So I don't even know, these have like a star, it's probably a specific name. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna use these for the others. They're not quite as long. The first section turned out pretty darn good. I mean, you might notice here where this board, the horizontal is not quite horizontal. It kind of goes up on the right-hand side and it's because the board itself is actually kind of warped and misshapen a bit. I probably should have checked that. The bottom one is pretty darn straight, but I think the most important thing is, is that it is level, like the top is level. All of these pieces match. Um, all of it sits on the floor nicely. So I'll just make sure that ends up in a corner and I'll um, take off with straighter boards going toward the left there. Um, I, I did, let me show you. So to make it a little bit easier, I cut three and a quarter inch blocks to go in between right here. So I didn't have to measure and mark every single time. I just put these and like butted up against the last one that I screwed in. That way I could put the new one on and it was easier. And then I just took a flat board and made sure that all of these, like this one met up with that board, if that makes sense. So it makes the work a little bit quicker. Anyway, pretty happy with that so far. So I'm just gonna carry on. All right, so I've got one 10 foot section done. Doesn't that look awesome? I'm so thrilled with it. So it came in at a half inch under 10 feet, which is pretty awesome, I think, given the fact that I had to use three separate boards on the back to make the whole thing happen. And then all of the pickets are different sizes too. So you can see this one here is a lot skinnier than that one there. And I kind of had to manipulate a little bit and like find a skinny one here and there to make them fit right on the board. But anyway, I think I'm gonna be able to make all 37 feet of this fence with just six pallets, I think. All right guys, I need to interrupt for just a second. I'm actually filming this a couple of days after the project was completed, but we got to this point of the video um, in the editing process and realized that we were missing a huge section. Basically, me taking all of the pre-assembled pieces out of the barn and putting them in their places. So it goes from barn assembly to finished product, and usually we try to capture the whole process, so it seems rather abrupt, so I wanted to explain that. I was filming the whole video by myself, plus doing the project by myself, um, so, 
a lot can go wrong when I'm in charge of both things. I might be missing a memory card. It may have dropped on the ground somewhere. Who knows where? Um, the cameras did keep overheating and turning off because it was 100 degrees that day. I don't know what the what happened, but basically all you're missing is uh, me digging four holes for the corner post. I put the two by fours in, and then I attached the pre-assembled fence sections, which you just saw being assembled, uh, to those corner posts with screws. Uh, I had a level out there to make sure everything was level, but that's basically all there was to it. Um, I didn't really film, uh, there wasn't really anything else to film. So anyway, just wanted to explain why it jumps from barn to finished product. Enjoy the rest of the video. And here's the finished product. Didn't it turn out so cute? I love it. So 10 foot by 10 foot square. It has a 40 inch opening right up here. And so the plan is I'm gonna move this, remove this brick here. And then we're gonna start with some round stepping stones and Benjamin and I will have some fun with those. Got a few plants already in there, but we're gonna just deck this thing out with butterfly loving plants and probably some strawberries for Benjamin and whatever else uh, he picks out. I thought I'd take him down to the garden center on a shop plant shopping trip. I just thought that this would be such a sweet way to utilize the space because I can pick this thing up. I mean, it comes off apart in one, two, three, four, five pieces and we can move it somewhere else. Or maybe this is the dedicated Benjamin or the be uh, dedicated kids garden space um, from this point forward. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to see how it evolves. We are, however, going to be removing the brick patio and the brick raised bed at some point. I just don't know exactly when that's going to happen, but I didn't want this space just to sit here bare. And we do have quite the chaos behind me. So glass greenhouse installation. We've got footers poured. They've got the rebar in and they're getting ready to put up the boards to pour the stem wall. So that's where we're at there. We'll be sharing our experience with you guys in a little bit more detail. We've been getting um, some pretty good footage I think throughout this whole process so we can kind of all put it together in one video for you. The thing about working with pallet wood is one it's awesome because typically you can get a hold of it for free or next to nothing. Um, but it, you know, it's not straight. There's a lot of bowed pieces. It's very um, inconsistent, I guess is the word that I'm looking for. I mean, you'll find some that are kind of uh, old and kind of starting to fall apart. Some will be uh, completely misshapen and bowed. Some will look a little bit newer right here. I actually saved the um, most consistent looking pieces for the front here so that our front had some uniformity a little bit, but you know, it kind of adds to the charm. It kind of makes it a little bit whimsical that not everything is perfect. Like I kind of like the fact that it's not 100% uniform over here. I've also been going back and forth as to whether or not I want to stain this. Um, like our vegetable garden fence, which is black. Uh, it's, I can see it, it's in front of me, but everything around this fence is a little bit more rustic. So we've got this wood structure here, which is also at some point gonna go. If I stained this, I feel like I'd need to carry on and stain the other wood that it kind of butts up to. And the pellet walkway is nearby too. So don't you think if I stained this, I feel like I would need to carry on the stain there. And then there's the white chicken run, the Hartley has white on top, and then we've got the pallet walkway right back here. So I think just kind of letting this sit here in its natural state and maybe gray out a little bit will be kind of cute. So again, I cut each one of the uh, slats 32 inches from the point all the way down to the bottom. I cut the tops at a 45. Some of them are really even and some of them are not because I was getting very impatient <laughs> toward the end. Um, and then what I did, let's see, you can see it better, best on this one here. Um, because I didn't have one long continuous board, you can see that one starts here or stops and one starts. Um, behind a slat, so I kind of hit it that way. Um, on some of them, I did some, let me find one, like right here, I added kind of a brace piece on ones that seemed a little bit more wobbly, if that makes sense. See right there? I just kind of wanted to add a little bit of stability. And then we happened to have one pallet that had four two by fours that were complete, which was amazing. Not all pallets have that. So those are our four fence posts. And then I used, this is the only wood I used that was not part of the pallet, which I totally could have used a scrap piece of wood from the pallet, but we had these stakes. So seven of those stakes, I just drove them into the ground and um, screwed them in just to provide a little bit of extra stability because I didn't have an extra two by four to run right here. But I think since it's temporary, these are gonna work perfectly. Because it's temporary, I did not um, cement the posts in. I just used our auger and dug out holes and then uh, sunk the posts down in, made sure that they were level, and then tamped the dirt 
as tight as I could get it. In, f in fact, I think some people say that's actually better um, if you don't use concrete on posts. I don't know, I've heard different schools of thought on that. Uh, either way, I didn't wanna be digging up concrete in the future. I didn't wanna add more concrete rather to this area um, because we've got a lot of that going on and we just got a, rid of a whole bunch of that where the Hartley's going. In terms of difficulty level, I think this is a pretty easy project. However, I do feel like it really wasn't worth the time to cut apart pallets and put it together. I feel like you could, with the time it took, um, maybe it felt that way because it's so hot out right now. Like it was 100 degrees when I was putting this fence up today in the full sun. Um, so I feel like you could go down and get slats and you could get it up a lot quicker, but there's something about putting in the time and putting in the effort to make you love things a little bit more uh, because you could appreciate what went into it, if that makes sense. And you know, if you have, if it's fun for you to do projects like that, and if you have extra pallets or access to pallets, like what a fun thing to do. In terms of investment, typically you can usually find pallets for free or very cheap. Um, I did not buy anything. I bought no supplies for this project. I did use screws uh, from our barn. I scrounged for them. I probably used six or seven different types of screws in this project. I had to uh, keep changing bits. It was kind of a pain. Um, and then I used those seven stakes that we had on hand. Uh, but I think what most instructions on these inexpensive pallet project guides, what they leave out is the fact that it really requires power tools. I mean, you could do it all by hand. I have uh, pried apart pallets with a pry bar and a a hammer, but it's kind of brutal. Um, so I used a uh, reciprocating saw that had a blade that cuts through both wood and nails at the same time to take apart the pallets. Made pretty quick work of it. Uh, then I used a jigsaw on occasion. I made a few cuts with that. I used a miter saw and I used a drill. Um, they all run off the same battery, so it was kind of nice. I was just swapping batteries from tool to tool. So there is kind of that element you have to think about, like, you know, do I really want to put in all the elbow grease to do this all by hand, or do I have the power tools required, or do I want to invest in those, uh, and so forth. But those are all things you can factor in based on what you want to do and uh, what kind of projects you want to tackle. Because of course, once you have those tools, you have them forever, and you can do a lot of fun things with them. So the next step, in this project is going to be uh, bringing in some compost. You can see I'm dealing with, I didn't really know what was under this tool shed, but this basically just looks like the dirt out in the new property. It's like just powder. So we need to amend that. It hasn't been touched by anything for a while. And what you are seeing right here was the mulch that we used in front of the tool shed. So the tool shed sat here and then we had just mulch. There was like some stepping stones that led up to the tool shed door. Um, so anyway, we'll just leave that. That'll break down and then we'll plant. You can see I already have some Play in the Blues and some Truffle Pink Gomfrina in here that I had on hand and I know butterflies love them. So I snagged those right away. I think they're gonna be really beautiful in the project, but we gotta go locate some other things and we'll probably be starting some things from seed as well. Overall, it was a really fun project to do. I'm really happy that, um, I don't know, we just had this open spot and sometimes an idea sparks. And Benjamin, uh, I have been noticing the last several times we've been outside, he sees a butterfly or a little moth flying around and it entertains him forever. Like he just follows them wherever they go. And I thought, oh, he would probably love if I could create something and bring him in, draw him in as much as I can into the process that uh, something that attracts butterflies, he will probably get a huge kick out of that. Um, and then if we can add a little bit of like strawberries or something like that in there that can kind of tantalize him and draw him in even more I think that's that'll be an extra uh, bonus so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video I really hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one bye